If years past were dominated by disaster response and global pandemic, this year would continue our federal missions globally. But it would take a hard pivot, hurtling us toward a superior level of readiness through compliance. Even more, we transformed our current battle space, staring down the specter of a near peer fight. We did this while deployed. We did this with the largest readiness exercise in wing history. We did this showing consistently high levels of effectiveness during ACC inspection. We did this as a team. And team, this is that story. This is your 2022 year in review. We start with the ops group who executed 29,000 MPA days, providing over 5,600 combat hours and over 300 combat sorties for multiple named operations. They conducted over 400 hours of academic and simulator training events for combat operation scenarios, culminating in MAGCOM large readiness exercise. And of course, their efforts were lauded as best in class by the ACC Inspector General. This group continued to enhance combat skills by participating in major exercises, domestic and international, to include Northern Edge, Valiant Shield, and Operation Saiha. These scenarios seamlessly integrate joint war fight with multiple partners, including 5th Special Forces Group and the USAFE Warfare Planning Center. Additionally, they trained over 150 aircrew and intelligence personnel in MQ-9's new auto takeoff and land capability. This is a force multiplier for combatant commanders as we pivot toward great power competition. Next, the Cyber Group supported new battlefield capes, proven in theater to be fielded by special operations forces. Our team, no surprise, was recognized by name by the AFSOC A2 director. They authored and released 22 intelligence reports, some being rated as mission critical. These reports were viewed by over 14 intelligence community entities and the president. They led four lines of effort with the ANG CISR Weapon System Council, improving the capabilities and lethality of the enterprise. Intent on readiness, they partnered for annual exercise to include a long-term joint readiness event. They activated 25 analysts, executing over 5,200 Title 10 days, delivering agile surge support to U.S. Cybercom Task Force. In this, they provided target development, signals development, digital network intelligence, and intelligence reports spanning five separate lines of effort, thus supporting a whole-of-government response during geopolitical crisis. Targeting surpassed all milestones from the previous year. Domestically, they partnered to repair infrastructure damaged by hurricanes in the Virgin Islands. Members poised to support Florida and dispatched three members in support of Florida hurricane recovery. The group embarked on a two-year training program converting 56 airmen from geospatial analysts to targeteers and all-source analysts. This positioned them as the first Air National Guard unit to conduct end-to-end -end targeting cycle processes. The unit expanded their ability to support joint air-to-surface strike missile long-range cruise missile planning. The ACCIG recognized the group for their highly effective training programs to include being the only Air National Guard intelligence unit to offer complex target system analysis training to the field and completing over 114 mission certifications on airmen across four mission sets. Finally, the ISRG increased federal mission execution over 36% to include operations bolstering U.S. and NATO actions in response to Russian aggression. In total, nearly 100 airmen volunteered to execute a record 17,000-plus MPA days in Garrison and Oconus. And for the third consecutive year, they were the number one producer of targeting materials in the USAF targeting enterprise. There is much more we can share, but it might be classified, or simply classified as bragging. Either way, 
the 118th ISRG is the apex of Air National Guard targeting. The Med Group was lauded by inspectors during the LREX for flawlessly executing en route patient staging under congested degraded operations constraints. A major contributor in the wing capstone, they showed strengths in Med Group processes to include public health, an area plagued with write-ups at many wings. They developed and implemented the first Wing Guidance Memorandum, making COVID policies actionable for local units ensuring mission assurance and execution. Consummate developers of their airmen, they mentored 24 members through PME, while maintaining mission readiness requirements. Members postured to support Hurricane Ian as part of the Tennessee National Guard pledge to send 1,000 plus members to aid Florida. More than a thousand airmen and soldiers are heading to Florida. They're packing their bags tonight, ready to go to work in the hurricane disaster zone. It's always exciting to go on a mission. Uh, it's why we put on the uniform, it's why we serve. The Med Group provided over 1,000 immunization shots. They processed over 130 cases for worldwide deployable personnel, recruiting and retention. Additionally, they medically processed over 80 deployers for RCP-08, all while deploying many of their own. Finally, their efforts continued our streak of individual medical readiness, positioning the wing in the top 10 of all Air National Guard units. The Mission Support Group always lives up to their name as they support our missions, and they support them well. Starting with CE, they mobilized members in support of Hurricane Ian relief efforts. And to try to keep everyone safe right now, 1,200 Tennessee National Guard members are on their way down to Florida to help with Ian recovery efforts. They rocked the Silver Flag exercise, completing mission essential and equipment training for personnel to remain ready for the next fight. And they deployed a staggering number of their own, mobilizing nearly half their squadron, utilizing eight different AFSCs in five different countries. COM was reclassified from a flight to squadron. Now poised to better meet a growing comm mission, they completed a half million dollar network upgrade. They refreshed the wing's computer, storage, and network functions, achieving 100% project compliance. As important, they upgraded the wing's infrastructure backbone, completing a 50% IT network optimization. The Force Support Squadron sustained the force by providing over 3,000 meals to 118th Wing Airmen, aiding in mission accomplishment and morale. Always cementing deployed skill sets, they mobilized 88 airmen to Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson in Alaska for readiness training. And more, they facilitated the execution of 26,400 MPA days for 252 airmen supporting Operations Freedom Sentinel and Inherit Resolve. The Logistics Readiness Squadron combined with local agencies and the Polish Air Force to bring over 40 tons of medical aid supplies for the Ukraine conflict. They solved cold weather gear shortage for members leaving on a short notice deployment. They received and issued 70 new M4A1 rifles and 121 M18 pistols for SFS, enhancing our defenders' ability to protect base missions. Speaking of our defenders, they provided reoccurring and pre-deployment weapons qualifications and weapons training for hundreds of wing personnel for RCP-08. And they masterfully executed a complex two-week LREX exercise for their members to include Joint Army Aviation Training Flights. Again, their performance and efforts being lauded by the IG. Wing staff, your skill sets are vast and your reach is far. Under extreme pressure and turmoil, you provided leadership, the lifeblood of money, the force multiplier of diversity, wise legal counsel, safety of operation, centralized communication, missional compliance, strategic messaging, and last but certainly not least, you advocated for our airmen and their families. Patriots, warfighters, citizen airmen of the 118th, you are a fully transformed wing at the apex of readiness, professionalism, and mission execution. At the 118th wing, we are in the fight today and ready to fight tomorrow.